We've probably all heard of those same four chords that you apparently can't avoid if you turn on the radio these days. This overused chord cliché is hard to shake loose from today's pop music. It used to be better. In the golden days of rock music, people were creative. Rock never had a set of rules. If anything, it was born to break the rules. Or is it? Rock music is a genre where the guitar determines a great deal of its sound. A guitar through an overdriven tube amp. It's like nothing else and it gives rock the character and the energy it's so well known for. When we look at the songs and to be more precise, the chords used in these songs, we find some very interesting things. Interesting thing number one. Did you hear something peculiar in that little montage of songs I just showed you? No? Well. Every chord you heard just now was a major chord. All these riffs or songs are using major chords only. Wait, isn't major supposed to sound happy and optimistic? Wouldn't minor chords work better in that rebellious scene? Well, yes and no, because major chords just sound better, especially with an overdriven guitar. Let me explain. In each minor chord we find a minor third interval, like this. This is what makes a minor chord sound, well, minor. It's a bit uncanny, right? If I bend it up a half tone, I reach the major third of the major chord. It just sounds way more open and nice, right? Again. Did you ever hear about overtones? When I play one note on a guitar, the fundament, you're actually hearing way more than just that one note. It may be hard to hear, but it's easy to see. When I play an A string, it's going up and down 110 times per second. This is called 110 Hertz. And we perceive that as an A note. We see it clearly in the audio spectrum. A peak at 110 Hertz, that's the A. Overtones are a result of that same A string also ringing in halves, in thirds, in fourth, in fifth, etc. Just like the natural harmonics found on the string, by the way. And we can actually see those overtones in the spectrum when I play an A. Above that fundamental note, we see one at 220 Hz, the octave, 330 Hz, the perfect fifth, 440 Hz, the second octave, and now at 550 Hz the major third, the fourth overtone, or the harmonic found at one-fifth of the string, is the major third. And interestingly, we do not find any minor thirds in the overtones, or harmonics, at all. Overdrive, or distortion, hugely brings up the levels of those overtones. Have a look at the same A note now played through an overdriven tube amp, and look how bright and shiny that fourth overtone, the C sharp, is coming through. That C-sharp is the major third of the A, so that major sound within just that open A-string is really quite audible at this point. So if you just play the A-string, you can hear a bit of that A major chord coming through, if you listen closely. And that's why that minor third, or the minor chord, can sound a little bit nasty, especially when you turn on the overdrive. A solution could be to just play a power chord instead, and of course this surely happens a lot, but it just doesn't, it doesn't have the same oomph, right? E power chord versus interesting thing number two. So although these rock songs are in a major key, they don't follow the typical chords where modern pop music nowadays is heavily based on. The diatonic chords. Diatonic means that all the notes are just from that scale. Rock music can be different. Listen to this. These chords 
broke free from the major scale. You can call this non-diatonic. We use notes in our chords not found in the scale of the key the song is in. Because where the major scale has the natural seventh scale degree, all of these examples use the flat seven. In simple language, if the key is A major, you would expect a G sharp. But the flat seven means there's a G in there. And we even turn that into a major chord. So G in an A key. A major and a G. Just a major chord, a whole tone or two frets below the tonic. So this is where we don't follow that typical set of chords. But why does this happen? Well, what if we wouldn't lower it? What if we stick to the diatonic chords found in the major scale? How would these riffs sound? It just doesn't sound very powerful, right? Too happy, too bright, not that intense sound of rock. So first we make the chords major, because these just sound better. But then we must avoid making it sound too cheesy, so we lower that 7th scale degree to a flat 7. It roughens up the major scale a little bit. The scale we're now playing is used a lot in blues music, and it's called Mixolydian. It's a major scale with a lowered 7, and it's very common in blues. And as we know, rock music is heavily influenced by blues, so it isn't strange at all. And we're also seeing this flat 7 in combination with the 4 chord a lot. So in A that would be like A, G, and D. Or in the key of E it would be E, D, and A. Super common, right? But that flat 7 chord seemed to confuse people a lot. What is the key? How do I improvise over these chords? Help! When you learn the diatonic chords, you learn that all these chords will sound good together. And when you see a progression that doesn't fit the rules, it could be hard to understand what's happening. That flat 7 chord can be called modal interchange, or a borrowed chord. It's when we take the 7th chord degree from the minor key in this case, and we use that in our major key. A very common thing to do, and to spice up the sound a bit. And if we learn something from the blues, is that playing minor over a major tonality isn't wrong at all. If anything, it sounds more authentic and bluesy when we do it. So often you can just solo over it, as if it's a minor key. Back in black, for example, it starts with an E chord, followed by a D and an A. The key is E major, but the solo is played in minor. To be more specific, it's a mix of minor pentatonic, minor blues and Dorian. Exactly the same goes for Alive, where the chords are E, G, D and A. And the solo is played in E minor with the same mix of scales used in Back in Black. Interesting thing number three. Interesting thing number three. It gets a little more complicated when we look at songs like Hey Joe, or every Nirvana song for that matter. <laughs> When we take a look at the chords used in Hey Joe, it can be confusing. It turned into an endless discussion on the web. It's hilarious to read, but also quite interesting, because people hear things differently. And it seems everyone comes to different conclusions, while the song is still the same. And I think analyzing something theoretically can sometimes be more confusing than just playing the song and feeling it, especially when the song doesn't follow the standard set of diatonic chords. So the key is E major. And the chords used are, again, borrowed from the parallel minor key. E minor in this case, modal interchange. Now it's also easy to solo over the entire progression in just E minor pentatonic or E minor blues, just like Hendrix does. So we get like the flat 6 chord, C, to the flat 3, the G, to the flat 7, the D, to the uh, 4, there they are, the flat 7 and the 4, and back to the 1 chord. It's a brilliant progression, and you can even make it more spicy when you solo by changing from Mixolydian on E to Aeolian on C and to Dorian on A to Mixolydian on E. But that's another video, because I think there's still something missing. 
and it's a rather big point, because isn't it strange that we analyze everything on a theoretical level without even looking at the instrument? Isn't it a bit coincidental that all the chords discussed in this video are the first five chords all beginners learn, the open major chords C, D, E, G and A, pure essentials of the guitar. And if you throw these chords together, you often end up with modal interchange and a lot of flat seven and fours apparently. These chords define the guitar and the sound of rock music. Let's say we have a song in the key of C. You seldom hear a B flat chord in there. And although it's the flat seven of C, it's just not a very rocky chord to play. So apparently it's not really a choice of like what chord degrees sound good. Do we play the flat seven over there or there? No. You just go with what the guitar gives you or what the guitar asks for. A powerful sounding overdriven open major chord. There's nothing quite like it. So those four chords that pop music is doomed to live with. Could we say the same for rock music? But then it's five chords, the E, the A, the C, the G, the D. And to make it a rock hit, we need to have that flat seven chord in there. Well, no. Rock is more than just the chords, it's about rhythms, the sound, the message, and surely not all rock songs are using these elements. There's probably more that don't than those that do, but I made this video because I saw a pattern. The pattern was that when any of these elements were present in a song, guitar players often had trouble understanding it. They couldn't identify the key, didn't understand the progression, or had a hard time finding the right scales to improvise over this. Especially when you start with learning music theory, if you encounter something that isn't following the rules, it's difficult to make sense of it all. Just remember that music theory doesn't talk about the rules. It never tells you what to do or what not to do. You can never say, but according to music theory, I should use chord X. No, music theory is descriptive. It can help you analyze certain aspects of music and help you find ways to deal with things if you haven't experienced this before. That's why I wanted to shed some light on this phenomenon. It's a sound that fits rock music really, really good. And that's why you see it so often. That energetic major chord sound, lots of open chords, and very often that flat seven or that four chord in there. It's not the recipe for a rock song, but I guess it is a recipe for a rock song. Thank you so much for watching. This would be a good moment to gently hit that like button. And I would really appreciate it if you can help me out by telling me what key is the song Sweet Home Alabama in? Please do it underneath that like button in the comment section. <laughs> Have a wonderful day with lots of open, overdriven major chords. <laughs> this was Paul, I'm Ed Allen.